Prime Minister was angry enough when the ABC's Q&A gave a platform to Zaki Mallah. He was furious when the ABC then repeated the screening. Utterly incomprehensible. Uh, here we had the ABC admitting a gross error of judgment. They compounded the mistake uh, by, uh, by rebroadcasting the program. Now, uh, frankly, um, heads should roll over this. Now, one government frontbencher knows better than almost anyone what happened on Q&A. It is the Liberal who was on that panel, Stephen Chobo, Parliamentary Secretary of Foreign Affairs and Trade. And he joins me now. First, congratulations on how you handled yourself. <laughs> Thanks, Edward. Did Q&A warn you that uh, in the audience was a man uh, jailed for threatening to kill uh, security officials and he'd be asking you a question? No, I mean, I didn't get any warning about that. And, um, it was fortunate because I happened to recall from my time on the uh, Parliamentary Intelligence Committee a bit of background about uh, Zaki Maller and things that he'd said and uh, what had happened. I wasn't across all the detail. I can, you know, admitted that on the night. But, um, but so, so basically, it was a, an, a, clearly going to be an ambush, and it would have worked had you not happened to know some of the details. Well, look, I mean, there's no doubt that uh, the producers knew Zaki Maller's background. I mean, that was self-evident uh, in the sense that when Tony Jones spoke about Zaki, he had all his case background, which you referred to, of course. Um, you know, the thing about politics, Andrew, you get used to things flying at you from left, from right, from all different directions. So uh, that's why I just think it's so fundamentally important. And what I was able to, I think, achieve on the night was to just state my belief, stick to my conviction, because ultimately that's that. what gets you through. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm going to the ABC. Um, their ambush would have worked better had it not been for almost like happenstance that you happen to know some sure. of the background. That, I think, is really unprincipled. Now, were you also aware that during the discussion, with you on the screen at times, uh, the ABC screened a tweet urging viewers to get a gun because the government was out of control? No, so I mean you don't you don't see that and uh, and I mean it's concerning to me that uh, you'd actually have not only someone on the screen uh, preaching frankly uh, views that are that are aligned with being a terrorist sympathiser but you've also got something down the bottom saying you know go get a gun. It's, uh, it's pretty extreme. Now ABC boss Mark Scott on Thursday gave a long speech uh, defending the ABC but in a way I think was uh, either deceitful or ignorant of the real issues, but I'd like your opinion. Sure. First, he asked the prime minister. Uh, he answered the prime minister's challenge. You know, whose side are, is the ABC mm. on? Have a look. The ABC is clearly Australian. It's on the side of Australia. The A in ABC is for Australian. Surely, no one seriously wants the ABC to be a state broadcaster. Now. I say it's deceitful because it's a straw man argument because as far as I can tell and no one in the government has suggested the ABC be a state broadcaster or even a pro-liberal one, true uh, or not? Well that's exactly right. I mean the fact is that as a member of the coalition and for those of us on the centre right the view is well what we expect of the ABC is more balance. Uh, what seems to be missing is a sense of balance. Uh, even if you take my experience on the panel and it's you know a fairly consistent experience week in week out. Uh, there were two of us that you would say were centre-right and then there were four that were either sort of centre-left or, or lunar-left, frankly. Um, and in host, that situation... And the host. Well, <laughs> the host that, is of the that, left. Well, sure. I mean, Tony's, Tony's uh, put forward his point of view in a range of areas. I think people know uh, where he's coming from. But, uh, you know, what, what coalition members are looking for, and I know what supporters that have reached out to me have said, is that they want much more balance from the ABC than what they're getting. Yeah, so I think Mark Scott was completely out of order to suggest he wanted to make it a state broadcaster. Here's the second claim he made that I think was very deceptive, a sort of bastardised free speech argument. Have a look. At times, free speech principles means giving platforms to those with whom we fundamentally disagree. It was the crux of the Charlie Hebdo argument last year. The Charlie Hebdo argument. So Scott is saying the right of the ABC to put an Islamist on primetime TV mm. in, a, in a favourable light is the same as the right of Charlie Hebdo cartoonists to mock Islam without being shot dead. Fair point? No, I mean, look, frankly, I find it a preposterous argument. Um, can you imagine 
Now, this is Zaki Mella, who's made comments in the past about wanting to see two female journalists gang raped. I mean, it's distasteful stuff. But could you imagine if Zaki Mella had used that national platform to stand up and say that he wanted to see two women gang raped? Could you imagine the uproar from the people? And there wouldn't be any of these spurious arguments about the right to freedom of speech or anything like that. This is a decision about a professional judgment about whether or not you provide a taxpayer funded broadcast, a national platform, for someone who is a terrorist sympathiser and someone who has openly called for the gang rape of women. Scott, in his big speech uh, defending the ABC, mentioned the word bias or balance only once. But he mentioned independent or independence 26 times. What does that tell you? Well, I think what's going on within the coalition is the view that the ABC has effectively become an island. Um, you know, the CEO is notionally accountable to the board, and yes, uh, the government of the day gets to appoint board members for a period of up to five years. Uh, but there's no pressure from sponsors. Uh, there's no pressure from ratings. Uh, there's no external pressure in terms of the government being able to say, we've got a problem with management and that person needs to go. So really, as an organisation funded by more than a billion dollars a year, the ABC sits as an island uh, unaccountable. So what are you going to do about it? Well, this is a conversation we've been having in the coalition. So the party room's been uh, looking at this. There is a lot of anger because it is strongly felt and keenly felt that there's a lack of balance in the broadcaster. Uh, no one's after it being a state broadcaster, but people are after balance. But you're limited, aren't you? I mean, what can you do? You can't sack the board. No, this is the point. You can't. I mean, uh, we're, the government and the way it's been set up means that we provide funding, one. $1.1 billion a year, but then there is no accountability beyond that. Well, you mentioned $1.1 billion a year. Surely the ABC is too big for a healthy democracy. No organisation, let alone a state broadcaster or a state-owned one, should be this big. I mean, private enterprise can't be this big. Five uh, radio stations every city, four TV stations. You've got to cut it, don't you? It, well, it's a, it is a big organisation. And uh, look, don't get me wrong, I think it plays an important role. Um, I'm not saying we throw no, the baby no, no, out. No, no, no. We the, both agree, we right? We, we listen the to the sport. Water. All right, fine. Sure. My point is, it's too big for a democracy, and particularly when it is exclusively, almost, of one side of politics. Sure. Should it be cut down? Uh, well, I think that there's scope to find savings, and indeed the no, government... No, 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 I'm not talking well, savings. Government... You're dodging and weaving. <laughs> is it too big for a democracy? Uh, well, that's hard for me to answer, to be honest with you, Andrew. I mean, in, if you ask no, me what not. is my the sense of it... No, it's not. The answer is yes. Well, no, if you ask me what is my sense of it, I do think that the ABC needs to stick to its charter. So in that sense, we've got to look it's at what is the It's not going to. Delivery. They're giving you the two fingers. But this Mark is... Scott just gave a speech giving no indication it's going to do that. Yeah, but this is where, but this is where I look at, for example, the fact that we've got a commercial broadcaster in terms of, for example, Sky News, uh, and then you've got the ABC running a 24-hour news channel as well. I find those strange. I think there's certainly scope for savings there. Um, ultimately, what size it should be, uh, that's a determination that's got to be made. But look, I do think that it's reached a scale and a so significance. This is a problem. You, you know, you, 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 the, the Liberals know it's a problem but haven't got the courage yet to fix it. Oh, with the greatest respect, Andrew, I think actually what it's about is, as I said, I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, but it's got to be a question of balance. And why, where, to me, where the major problem is at the moment is that it's not balanced. And that's got to be the focus. It's never going to be balanced. Mark Scott got up on national TV and said, forget it. Yeah. We're independent. You're yeah. not going to fix it. Well, I'm, I'm confident that where there's a will, there's a way. And, uh, and the, coalition, <laughs> they, mate, the coalition is very focused. And this is part of the reason why we're making this a debate. Because what's going on now in terms of the way it's become an island is unacceptable long term. There needs to be structural change. And I'm confident that we'll be able to achieve it. Structural change. Hmm. That could be anything good. Thank you, Stephen Chobo, for joining me. Pleasure. Coming up, the panel and a lie. Back after this.